What is going on guys welcome back to another video I hope you are having an amazing day in today's video we are going to be taking a look at the latest China beta for the Redmi Note 7 Pro Violet so again as I spoke to my moderator and he said that there would be no betas for the Lavender and the Violet which would be the Redmi Note 7 and the Note 7 Pro which is just extremely weird that when we asked it was just some security reasons while they are still providing all the betas to rest of the phones but I guess this rule doesn't follow up in China so we have the first beta from the China right over here and this is pretty jam packed like it has so many features this phone has just become much more better now we are still waiting for the MIUI 10.3.5.0 redmi note 7 got it like two weeks back so until then we have to just check this so again this is china beta again this is just released yesterday this is 9.5.14 i had to actually upload this yesterday but i just didn't have internet some monkeys jumped on my internet provider servers but here you go this is your home screen now again as you can see there is no google search bar cause as this is china beta there is no google apps it's just me store but you do get a search bar on the bottom yeah now it doesn't really look awkward at all now it's even easier to access phone app right over here at my thumb but some of you guys might actually think that it's just too much i'm actually loving it this could be replacing the google assistant and the google search bar on the global betas or the global stables in the future like around mio 10.4 if that ever happens but i guess we will be now directly getting mio 11 just around the starting of the june and this is one of the changes that you will see again going through the app vault over here again gets a bit of an upgrade as you can see over the top you now get weather as well as your date earlier it was just date for some phones then again you have shortcuts which can't be now moved around you still have your widgets which can be customized as you can see you still have the search bar over here if you just disable it right over there but then again now you can also expand the shortcuts which is pretty great you just don't have to add it each and every single time once you have to sort them again you have me home over there you can just allow it i guess to just add some more toggles over there which is pretty good as you can see the animations are very sleek and fluid then again going through the apps and stuff pretty much you had the normal thing is then again just going through the apps again phone app messages app app opening times are pretty great as you can see the performance is on par for snapdragon 675 i haven't actually entered to benchmark this thing but i guess it is a bit faster than before but then again just going through the apps and stuff they are all updated to the latest of them so again weather app as you can see why it just froze over there is my internet dead again oh no it was the glitch with the app nice so again one of the changes if you go to the themes app you would be getting a very different themes app when compared to the global markets as you can see you have to now scroll around for wallpapers live wallpapers themes and stuff as you can see which is pretty great you also get this in the nubia phones pretty similar one so again speaking of the apps just going to the security app you have game speed booster battery life cleaner all update to the latest of them and then the game speed booster yep you finally get the newer game speed booster which we have seen on the pocophone f1 as you can see really looks great you have this nice little intro over there now you can also download these games it has cpu usage gpu usage and the battery percentage over here which is again nice when compared to the pocophone f1 even if you go to the settings you have pretty handy tools over here as you can see you have performance mode where it optimizes the wi-fi the touch controls enhances audio then again normal game speed booster toggle in-game shortcuts then again additional settings where it's just blank you have enhanced experience where you have turn off auto brightness turn off reading mode just like auction OS, various of stuff added over here which is pretty great again the scroll lag over here is a pretty well content as you can see i have many complaints when it comes to the touchscreen of the pocophone f1 and the redmi note 7 pro at least redmi note 7 pro was good at typing pocophone f1 was just hideous when it launched but then again the touchscreen seems to be working pretty great over here as you can see follows my finger pretty well and then let's just hop onto the camera now the camera is pretty great over here if you haven't already noticed there is a 48 megapixel toggle over here right over here which is pretty great because 48 megapixel option now really works great it's no longer a gimmick so you just don't have to now go through here you have tilt shift and everything stuff just right over there but there is also no google lens and 48 mp now just shifted over here you will be getting google lens if you install the google app right over there but 48 mp is now right over here you also have portrait mode night mode you also have the studio lighting and stuff on the latest base you also have pro mode which is completely packed as you can see manual focus and stuff if you don't want to know 48 mp toggle right over here pretty great that xiaomi has actually provided it finally on a mid-range of phone again if you go to the video pretty much nothing just 4k 30 fps even if you go through the settings just right over here you have quick snap mode which i haven't actually tried then again device watermarks timestamp photos pretty much normal stuff nothing added over here if you just shift to the front camera pretty much normal story you have settings timer square age and gender which i guess it's removed in global i haven't actually checked you also have the magic mirror which basically it's like 
a Chinese app which took over where you have to just smile and just curse you. Yep, how ugly you are. Xiaomi has this integrated right over there, but 48 MP mode does really not work well. Like this is a normal photo. AI and HDR turned on as you can see. Even if I zoom in, you can't actually make through this net right over here. It's just jagged. Whereas over here, it's a bit darker as you can see, cause no HDR. But then again, if I just zoom in, there is just a whole lot of bunch of detail, which is really impressive. As you can see, it takes a bit of a time to load. But if you just come through this net, as you can see, you can make the hexagon shapes right over there, which is pretty great. The amount of detail in this camera is just amazing. But then again, you have the normal gallery over here, where if you just go, through the photos now you can actually access the month view yep you have to just zoom out but yep it just does i thought there would be needing more photos but it just works then again just coming down to the home screen if you just hold on over here now you get group uninstall and done right over there you don't have to just hold on any kind of app as you can see if i just select bunch of apps i can group or just uninstall them if you just go to the settings app now, your MI account just shows right over there. Your device security status is just removed from over here. It's just right inside the my device. Again, you have all the specs over here as this is a China ROM. If you go to the all specs, Android version 9 Pi, of course, you are not getting QBeta. I mean, people are now asking Xiaomi for QBeta cause Realme 3 Pro got it. Guys, that's a Snapdragon 700 series phone. They needed a 700 series phone, which people have actually bought in order to conduct the beta. So again, Snapdragon 675 doesn't really need one. You can just flash the GSI over here and both of the GSS like the official GSI and Irfan's GSI just work great over here. But then again, the security patch over here is May, so latest and the greatest. But then again, if you just come down to the display, dark mode, yep, you have a finally a official toggle for the dark mode. And now if you tap it, voila, the screen just completely goes black. Now, as this is not an AMOLED phone, there is not a huge benefit, but really looks great over here. Even though this is a LCD, goes pretty black. You can't make out the camera or the bezels at the bottom. Now, if you just go through all the apps, they are now completely gray and blackish tint. Even if you go through the system UI, it's now completely black, even the recent apps panel, as you can see. But weirdly enough, the app world just doesn't change. It's still white, which is in global stable and beta just completely goes to the black, even in the Mi 9. But let's just switch it to the light mode. Even if you go to the contrast and colors, you get the RGB wheel, which I'm still waiting for on the Note 5 Pro. You get double tap to wake, raise to wake as before, nothing new in that. But if you now scroll down, lock screen and password, you still have app face data and face lock for apps. As this is China, which is a bit weird, face data is not actually provided in China because those people do actually care about security than dumb features. But just going back again, just going through normal features, notification and status bar, just your normal story, nothing new. Your notification style to choose between MIO and Android. Now, this is not the complete status bar. It's just your notifications cause MIO has to look same from Android Lollipop to Android Q. So if you switch that notification style to Android, you will get all the features from Android Pie like the DND and stuff, which is pretty great. But if you scroll down, you have screen time. Now, this is Xiaomi's own digital well-being and it just now works from Android No Good to Android Pie. No issue at all because it's Xiaomi's big 10 because we all know what of a meme digital well-being now is. So this is a very great alternative that Xiaomi has created itself and it's pretty good. You can actually track down your usage and stuff pretty well. Now just going back home screen and recents, nothing much. You don't have show suggestions right over here, which looks a bit odd. As you can see, apps are now in the middle. There is just a missing portion right over here. And now scrolling down, you have special features, which is not special at all, it's just normal features, but you have Xiaomi AI, which is of no use outside China, full screen display. And now if you turn on the hide notch, I don't know whether I am weird or those corners are now completely like Poco F1 to just match the bottom bezel. I mean, it doesn't look ugly at all, but seriously. Scrolling down to more features, you have MIUI lab, right over here you have car mode, in which you can just participate in beta testing and it is pretty handy if you live in China. This is a very nice alternative to Android Auto. You have find photos in gallery, which is again a pretty nice option. You can just type for anything like a text or a document that you're searching or anyone's name that you have contacts to saved in. And it just searches, which is pretty great. Samsung already has it, but not that good. Then you have light mode, explore new features, which are basically unused features. So as this is a China ROM, you have tap plus, which is very nice service. I don't have a whole idea on it. You have quick ball, one handed mode and second space, just like normal MIUI ROMs. And yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the first review of China Beta ROM on the Redmi Note 7 Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want me to cover more global beta or the China Beta ROMs, please let me know in the comment section below. And yes, Auction OS work is uh, completely not done. It's still remaining, but you can just follow me on Instagram for more updates. And see you guys in the next one. Peace.